nothing phone to a if you have been following this channel for a bit you know i have been fully immersed in the apple ecosystem no hard feelings it's just that apple's devices have always helped me zip through tasks effortlessly in fact i even dedicated an entire video to explain why i believe the apple ecosystem is unbeatable so I picked up the new Nothing Phone 2A. Why the change? Well, I'm diving back into the Android world and let me tell you, I'm pretty excited. So first up, why did I choose the Phone 2A? I've actually been using an iPhone 15 Pro for five months now, but I wanted to switch back to Android for a bit. Why? Well, to truly understand the iPhone, I believe it's important to keep exploring the Android world as well. I opted for the Phone 2A because I've been closely following Nothing's progress and I really admire their efforts to build a strong community. It reminds me of the old OnePlus days. Moreover, I really appreciate their approach to innovation, striving to break boundaries and stand out in a smartphone market that's become a bit, well, stale. I think they are like the apple of the android universe, but I believe they are also adding something unique of their own, despite not having the same level of influence as apple, at least not yet. I particularly value the founder Carpe's commitment to transparent communication with their potential customers. For instance, he openly acknowledged that at the moment the iPhone outperforms Nothing's flagship. I believe this honest approach will greatly benefit Nothing in the long run. I think iconic is the key word. Place this smartphone next to any other and it immediately stands out as something distinct. It's not just about the striking leaf interface, it's also about the transparent approach to communication which executes honesty and integrity. Admittedly, this smartphone may not offer a radically new experience and its performance might be on pair with others in its class. However, it's difficult to put into words the excitement I felt when I first purchased it. It felt like embarking on a new journey, reminiscent of the days when every new smartphone release brought groundbreaking upgrades almost 5-6 years ago. What sets this smartphone apart is not just its unique exterior but also the plethora of iconic design features within the software. From the customizable widgets and icons to the extensive customization options, it's clear that a lot of thought has gone into the user experience. This smartphone is really unique and nothing clearly wants to distinguish itself from all the other smartphones even if it runs on the Google software. They use a custom dot font and personal widgets which want to say, hey, I'm not an Android smartphone, I'm a nothing phone. Now, I'm not one to get bogged down in technical specs, but let me tell you the Phone 2A has some seriously impressive features. Let's talk about the stunning 120Hz display. The smoothness and clarity it offers elevate the user experience to a whole new level. And also the battery life, it's a beast. I like the iPhone 15 Pro which often struggles to make it for the day. The Phone 2A boasts a large battery that keeps you powered up and ready for anything. Now, I want to make one thing clear. This isn't, of course, a head-to-head -head comparison between these two devices. It wouldn't be fair and frankly it wouldn't make much sense. However, I can't help but notice the stark differences in performance and user experience. The Nothing smartphone impressed me right out of the gate. It's incredibly responsive and snappy thanks in part to a host of meticulous details that elevate it to flagship status. From the black and white icons widgets to the strong visual identity to the GIF interface and meticulously crafted animation scattered here and there, down to the extremely competitive price, I'm practically liking everything about this nothing phone if it weren't for the unfortunate fact that it still relies too much on Android. Let me be crystal clear here, I have nothing against Android and in fact until a few years ago I always used and loved the little green robot. However, there are still some issues that remain, issues that prompted me to switch to the beaten Apple three years ago. The biggest problem with Android and one that I fear may never be resolved at this point is the lack of graphical consistency. So far, we have talked about the grid work Nothing has done in various menus and some apps. Yes, exactly, the problem arises as soon as we step out of the Nothing world and open any other application. First of all, Nothing has only redesigned a few applications at the moment. The voice recorder app 
for example is truly magnificent but the calculator or the clock are nothing more than the applications designed by Google. This applies to the Play Store and all the other applications as well. If you switch from iPhone to Android, I assure you that you will notice this problem a lot. Despite nothing doing an excellent job and I hope it continues to gain more market share, there are still many issues that come with Android. A few years ago, Google introduced the new Material U, a graphical language that should dictate the guidelines to unify the operating system in some way. Nothing, for example, has chosen a completely different graphical language from Google's, yet we will always end up with a mix of Google and Nothing applications on the smartphone. But this problem, in my opinion, doesn't end here. I've compared a few applications between iOS and Android, and I have noticed that none of them follow any guidelines. Take, for example, the Spark application that I use on all my devices as a client for all my emails. In my opinion, Spark is already a fairly well-crafted application, but it still presents obvious problems due to those famous guidelines I mentioned earlier. As soon as you open the application, does it seem more confusing on Android? Well, it's not just a feeling, but if we analyze the problems, there are some substantial differences. On Android, for example, there is no divider between the various categories, the sender's name is not not in bold, so basically there is no hierarchy between the texts, everything has the same importance and the icon colors are all grey. Now these are small differences in a simple email application, but imagine the same problems in much more complex apps. In conclusion, the Nothing Phone 2 has captured my interest with its iconic design, impressive features and nothing transparent approach. While there are some challenges related to its integration with Android, I remain confident in the device's future evolution. Therefore, I'll be sticking with the Nothing Phone 2 eager to see how Nothing will continue to innovate over time. Let me know in the comments your opinion about the Nothing's work and as always, wishing you the best. See you soon.